What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Shuffle Squad's YouTube channel. I'm Jarek and today I'm going to be going over some post-rotation Chen Pao. Now while Chen Pao hasn't changed much from last format to this format, the introduction of Temporal Forces, which is our newest set, and the rotation of our current standard format caused the deck list to change just a little bit. So, without further ado, let's take a look at my current 60 and let's see what some of those changes look like. So here's my current take on post-rotation Chen Pao. I went with a 3-3 for Jabax Baxcalibur line, and while this might look different since previous lists used to only play two Baxcalibur, I think since adding the third one in here, it's felt amazing, and I'd never go back to two. Honestly, I've always wanted to play three, but pre-rotation, with things like Cross Switcher and Canceling Clone, there was never enough space. But now without those cards in the deck, I dedicated one of those spots to the third Baxcalibur, and honestly, I'm not looking back. The 2-2 B-Doof B-Barrel line stays exactly the same. I am down to only two Chen Pao EX. So far, it's been alright, especially since I'm playing three Super Odd, but that might be one of the first things where I change it back to three. I am playing two Iron Hands EX. Some matchups, I do want to be aggressive with Iron Hands early, so I think by playing two, uh, less chance of prizing it, and I can find it earlier in the game when I need it. However, if I realize I don't need two, that's probably the card I'd cut back for the third Chen Pao EX. One of the newest additions to the deck is this Iron Bundle with the Hyper Blower ability. Uh, it's a one-sided escape rope. Your opponent switches their active Pokemon with one of their benched Pokemon. It's a pseudo-gust effect. Sometimes it's good in a pinch. Sometimes you can use it to bring a two-prizer out of the active, force them to put a one-prizer into the active. Then you can use Iron Hands and Ampu very much to take an easy two-prize cards. All in all, it's a great card. I know you discard it after using the ability, but... With three Super Rods, you can reuse the Iron Bundle and Hyper Blower over and over and over again. Obviously, to round out the Pokemons, Radiant Greninja, Concealed Cards, great way to add consistency to the deck, and Moonlight Shuriken, still an unbelievable attack. Now, the Supporter Lines, I'm not playing a boss's orders, but I think four Irida and one Iono is just enough. Again, Irida finds you everything in your deck, and one Iono just makes sure you have Disruption uh, whenever you need it in the game. For the Search Cards, I do have four Nest Ball, four Ultra Ball, that didn't change. We do need to get our Pokemon out. We need to get them out early. And we need to be able to have access to them whenever we need. So a 4-4 is definitely needed. And one of the newest cards in the deck, the Buddy Buddy Poffin from Temporal Forces, kind of replaces Battle VIP Pass, since it lets you find two Pokemon with 7 HP or less and put them right onto your bench. Now I know you can't grab Radiant Greninja, you can't grab Chen Pao, you can't grab Iron Hands, you can't grab Iron Bundle, but... You can use Buddy Buddy Poffin to grab your Bidoof and to grab your Frigibax and then save your Nest Balls uh, to grab some of your bigger Pokemon. Uh, now also in the deck, another different inclusion is four Rare Candy. Three Rare Candy was always good in the past, but now having four, I feel like you find it much faster, you find it more consistently, and you're less prone to things like the Devolution TM. And like I said, I am playing three Super Odd. It does help me recycle the Chen Pows. It does help me recycle Iron Bundle. So far, I like the three Super Rod, but that's one of the cards that can change if need be. I'm still playing two Earthen Vessels. Of course, you need the Vessels to find your Water Energies, your Lightning Energies when you want to use Iron Hands EX, so I think you definitely have to play at least two. I'm still playing one Hisuian Heavy Ball. You could get your one Iron Bundle out of the prize cards, or more importantly, the one Radiant Greninja, since that is a super important card in this deck. Of course, our Ace spec of choice is what I think the best ace spec is from Temporal Forces, and that's Prime Catcher. It's basically Guzma, but in an item form, so it's incredibly powerful. It lets you bring one of your Pokemon's bent, one of your opponent's benched Pokemon up into the active, then you get to switch your active Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. Uh, whether you use Prime Catcher to close out the game, whether you use it mid-game to switch in and out of the active, either way, it's one of the most powerful ace specs, and I can't believe this is actually an item. Because that means we can find it with Pokestop, which, without Path to the Peak in format, I think Stadium Bumps, at least at first, seem less important. So two Pokestops seem fine to me so far. Then for the energy count, decided to go with eight Water Energies, just enough to have uh, Chen Pao when I need it to swing, just enough to use on Greninja. Again, we're playing four Superior Energy Retrieval, so we can recycle those over and over and over again. And then I am playing two Lightning Energy, I am playing two Iron Hands EX, so I thought two Lightning Energy would be perfect. Well, let's see how this list does. All right, so Chen Pao, typically we do want to go first. Uh, never hurts us going first. We got to get Baxcalibers into play. We got to get B-Barrels into play. 
going first if we get the choice is always ideal and more often than not whether we win or lose the coin flip we should be able to go first there are a lot of decks in format that want to go second for example my opponent right there chose to go second so let's see what we start with okay it's not terrible glad we got the brand new uh prime catcher in hand too look at that pretty pink card Ooh. all right so we're against future box we're against future box um do a quick prize check chen pao two waters Ooh, we prize the backs um that's okay that's okay uh, first things first i do want to find a bib and a fridgy so i'll conceal cards first gives me higher odds to finding a pokemon uh buddy poffin will do it for us another brand new card I'm so excited uh cannot wait to use it it's not as useless as vip pass you could use it past turn one but you know uh you can't grab things like a chan pao with it or decks that played it a giratina a v things like that you can only grab pokemon that are 70 hp or less so that's fine nest ball uh put another fridgy down don't need a prize check because we already played a Suyan Heavy Ball to check for us. Uh, there's no reason to put the Chan Pao in play right now. No need to give my opponent a target for two prizes, though. If it is future box, they'll probably get an Iron Hands down anyway. They might be able to amp the Ninja, so probably is okay to put down the Chan Pao. Uh, let's prep for the Greninja being KO'd. We'll just pass. Honestly, that's a great turn one. Sorry, too. I know the background in my room was a little hard to see, but if you check right up there, uh, that is a kind of like picture frame sign uh, that my lovely girlfriend made for me for my birthday this year. That was a couple weeks ago. It's a picture, a bunch of pictures of me actually playing Pokemon. Um, it's got a huge hashtag TSS win. It's awesome. I love it. I really thought it brought this entire room together. So thank you so much for making that for me. I know took you a lot of time and i'm glad i get to show it off here a little bit uh, on camera so let me know what you guys think anyways back to the game so it is future box like i thought um my opponent doesn't have an iron hands they have maridon okay so it looks like they're gonna use the maridon for peak acceleration they're probably not gonna get the amp off this turn um and that's fine if they don't get the knockout this turn with amp uh, that's perfectly fine with me hopefully we can take two prizes this is where prime catcher is going to be awesome we can bring up this fully loaded iron hands or the one that they decide to load up if they don't split the energy and we'll take the first two prizes and i think from there it's just a prize race it's going to be two prizes two prizes two prizes so gm pal's gotta do some work here and rattle it off okay so our opponent did split the energies but this Iron Hands has three. Um, I did not want to top deck a Super Rod there. It's less cards I get to draw with Bib. But we'll do this first. And we will Prime Catcher. Absolutely busted new A spec. It's Guzma as an item. Now, I'm going to use Bib before I Shivery Chill. The reason is I need three more energies to KO this Iron Hands. So if I draw cards before you Shivery Chill, um, I have better odds of actually hitting energy off of the Industrious Incisors. Uh, we didn't hit energy, but we did hit a Vessel. It's great. Uh, Nest Ball. We're going to have a second Chien Pao ready to go. Uh, our opponent does only have one card in hand. Not many attackers, so... I want to be ready anyways. We'll have a second attacker. I should have got a second Bib, actually. Or a second Bidoof, I'm sorry. So slight misplay there for me, but I don't think it's going to matter. I think we're in a great spot no matter what. So grab two. And my poor opponent. Sorry, opponent. Uh, what I'm going to do here is attach just enough. And then the reason I'm going to keep the rest in hand, next turn I can conceal cards with Greninja. I can attach retreat if need be. Um... There's no need to put this into play right now. I already have the KO with Hailblade, and we are going to do just that. Again, my opponent has one card in hand. Um, they don't have anything like Gift Energy attached, so 
To me, that tells me their hand may be pretty dead, especially since they played Arvin last turn. And we take the prize lead. Okay, so far so good. Pull to the Irida and the Pokestop. Two great prizes to take. Let's see what my opponent has now. Okay. And Iono. Okay. Okay, so their hand wasn't completely dead unless they top decked the Iono. But let's see what kind of attack or if they can even pull off a relevant attack here. Now, ideally, they probably do want to take a KO with Iron Hands. Whether they amp one of these, uh, you know, little guys for two prizes. Or use Arm Press on my Chen Pao with enough Iron Crowns in play. Uh, they need to take two prize cards here. If my opponent doesn't take two prize cards, I think they may have a difficult time winning this game. So let's see what happens. Okay. They do have the three Iron Crowns in play now. But... Okay, looks like they're just going to go for Peak Acceleration. So here... Uh, did use my Gust Effect in the Prime Catcher already, so unfortunately, I won't be able to take two prize cards, but I can potentially take three prize cards later in the game with my own Ampu very much. Uh, that would probably entail using Greninja to some extent. Uh, let's see here. Use Greninja and go like 90, 90. Uh, my opponent will come up and take two prize cards on the Greninja. I can respond and take two prizes on this. And then we should be able to close the game with an amp here. Okay. So let's try and play for that. Didn't happen. Let's see. Anything could happen. All right. So we're going to draw first. That is not at all what I wanted to see. All right, so our game plan is going to change here a little bit. Let's shivery chill. And let's get sealed cards. Let's see what we find. Find a superior, that's good. Um, I still won't have enough energy to get the play I wanted off, but I don't think this is the end of the world here. wish I could attack with my back's caliber here, but my opponent may amp me here for three also. Hmm. If I get amped for three, it would be three prizes to three, and as long as they can't amp me for three again, if I keep this Chen Pao protected, I still should be able to win the prize trade. So, we are going to do that. We are going to prep our response Chen Pao. And then yeah, we'll just go ahead and Hail Blade. Take both the energies off the active. I assume I'm going to get KO'd here by an Amp. But the good news is our opponent does not have another attacker ready. So unless they can really ready up another attacker this turn, uh, once we respond to this Iron Hands with our Chen Pao and go down to one prize card, our opponent might be in a bit of a pickle. They have four cards, one attacker set up. Let's see what they can do. So Future Box is pretty cool. Even though this looks like more of the Turbo Iron Hands version, because I haven't seen um, an Iron Boulder, haven't seen Grass Energy, haven't seen Iron Leaves, anything like that. But I still think this version of the deck is very interesting. I think it's good. It's aggressive. Uh, it's pretty fast. Um, it may struggle in terms of consistency, but... Once it does get rolling, um, it is a force to be reckoned with for sure. Okay, so our opponent plays an Iono, super odd, see what they put back in, makes sense. They're probably going to try to set up a second hand here. The thing is, if they don't set up a second hand, oh, the baton, the baton's huge actually. So they will have a second hand no matter what. Even if we KO this, those energies will go to that iron hands and it'll be ready to attack again. The thing is, they're going to be at three prizes. I think my opponent's just a little bit behind here. What I'm going to do on my turn, I'm going to Super Odd first, uh, put some energies in the Chen Pao back in deck, Shivery Chill for those energies, attach those energies with Bex, and then Bib to drop to five. So I think we just win the prize trade here no matter what. Again, I know our opponent takes three, but I don't see another way for them to take three prize cards after this. So 
No promo up to Chen Pao. Uh, like I said, we'll play the Super Odd. I do want to put the Chen Pao two waters back. I want a Shivery Chill. Grab those two waters, attach them. So we do have the KO here. Excuse me. So we do have the KO here. And then now what I really want to do is try our best here to set up a game winning attacker which would be the Chen Pao so first I'm going to bib see what I grab because then I can ear it off or whatever I'm missing okay so I do have a superior that means off this I'm going to grab a Chen Pao and a rare candy uh, what this kind of does is I think it just kind of ensures me the game because I have rare candy now I have double backs even if they gun one it's fine. We have this Chen Pao here ready to go. I do kind of want to put Pokestop in play, give me more outs, but I can save it because I could superior grab two, put it onto here, and then I'd only need two energy to close the game, which means any superior would do it for me, but I think, I actually think I'm just going to hold the hand, put nothing into play here. I have two prize cards. There's no reason for me to play anything else in hand. I'm going to take the KO. And just like that, we're going to go down to one prize card. Now, like I said, I think my opponent just loses this prize race. Especially because we took the first two prize cards. I know we had to take one prize card on the uh, Numeridon in the middle of the game. But as you can see, we're down to one. Even with all the Iron Crowns, my opponent cannot take a knockout with Ampu very much on my Chen Pao. And we finally pulled the energies. But even here, even if they attach, um, the amp is doing 120, 140, 160, only 180. Even if they attach the capsule, uh, the, this one specifically, the future booster capsule to do 20 extra damage, they'd only amp for 200, 20 damage short. Wouldn't be able to take three prize cards on a Chen Pao. The counter catcher, probably trying to stall here with the bib or iono and ko the bib uh, that's not a bad plan either but let's see let's see what our opponent has in store here because if our opponent doesn't they only have two prizers so even if they retreat the mew into one of these we ko it with a chen pao uh, we super cold two energies here to the active bib retreat superior two cards in hand grab four waters out of the discard pile swing for 240 it looks like they are going to take two prizes on the bib. Now, if they mix this with an Iono, that's where things could get scary. Ooh, and they bench a fourth Iron Crown. So what is actually scary now is if they counter catcher or bought, they played Arvin. So if they counter catcher this Chen Pao or prime catcher, I think they already used their retreat for the turn though. So our opponent might've misplayed a little bit because this gives amp 80 damage so amp would have hit for 200 and then with the future booster caps doing 20 more damage it would have hit for 220 which is just enough to ko a chen pao and our opponent could have taken three prize cards there so phew we kind of got away with one there uh, our opponent definitely had the game i don't know if they saw it i don't know if they missequenced but we definitely got away with one there i did not think our opponent was playing four iron crowns um i've seen lists with three i've seen lists with four and there it is our opponent concedes so yeah chen pao taking down future box all right and that's my take on pulse rotation chen pao as always if you like the videos over here at the shuffle squad don't forget to hit that subscribe button that way you never miss any of the competitive content that we do release with euic and rotation just around the corner tons and tons of information is going to be dropped on this channel and you don't want to miss it of course you can also help out the algorithm by hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below you could comment on my gameplay, comment on my deck list, or just let me know some of your ideas for post-rotation Chen Pao. Well, that's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Want to support the Shuffle Squad? Be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up Pokemon TCG singles, sealed, and PTCG live codes.
made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content, watches what we have going on every single day, every single week, even from time to time, and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the Pokemon TCG community. So if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and even leave a comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. That being said, we'll catch you with our next video. Thanks again. Take it easy.